snitches everywhere. American snitch and a Chinese snitch. Welcome to the show, guys. This is your host, Valentine, from The Valentine Show, guys. The weekend is here, and you, my friend, are blessed. Okay, guys, let's get right to it, guys. This week, we have snitches everywhere. Last week, I uploaded the video, and I didn't cover a very, very important issue that was happening last week. I'm going to give you my honest opinion on the issue. And this is the whole Donald Trump um, poop countries uh, comment. First of all, if you believe it because you're uh, because that that was in the news just just for that fact, then you're just a sheep. You are being led to the slaughterhouse. You cannot believe everything that is in the news just because it's in the news. Uh, for me, now me, I need a video. I need a video. I need a person s- is saying what they saying. Now I believe because the thing is that you you cannot just go nowadays with all the things that's happening. And I, I me personally, I've seen the effects of what words. Uh, uh, a lying words can have on people's lives without no proof whatsoever. And this is the same, the same, I'm a- analyzing this, this situation the same exact way. Donald Trump, quote unquote, said these words about countries from Dick Durbin. Dick Durbin, I have no idea who Dick Durbin is, but thank God the internet knows who Dick Durbin is. Dick Durbin said that Donald Trump said SIT, SIH. What is it? S-H-I-T countries. What I need to know is who is Dick Durbin? And this is who Dick Durbin is. Dick Durbin is the man who says that the the use of chain migration, the term chain migration is offensive to African Americans. Look. When it came to the issue of, quote, chain migration, I said to the president, do you realize how painful that term is to so many people? African Americans believe that they migrated to America in chains. And when you speak about chain migration, it hurts them personally. So this is a, a, a person who this term has been used since the 1960s to describe uh, migration. Meaning, for example, they, they say chain because if they I come from the Dominican Republic, I bring my wife. Then she's able to bring her parents. Then her parents bring so and so, and they call it a chain. They said this is derogatory towards African Americans. But this is the man that also said this in 2010. Subject to tough criminal penalties for fraud, the Dream Act would not allow what is known as chain migration. In fact, Dream Act students would have very little limited ability to sponsor their family members for legal status. That man is Dick Durbin. So he's. Saying that Donald Trump is a bad person for using chain migration, which is a perfectly legal term, and you're going to be using chain migration? Thank you, Internet. Dick Durbin, Valentine, says that you, my friend, are a hypocrite. <laughs> using term, and you want to correct somebody for using the term. So this is the man that we're talking about. Now he comes and said that Donald Trump says this. I do not believe that man. Now, let's imagine that Donald Trump said it. Is Donald Trump the person that will say something like that? 100% yes. I believe that Donald Trump is a person that will say something like that. But what was he trying to say at the end of the day? Was he trying to be racist or was he just trying to protect the interests of the United States? The same way you will protect the interests of your house. And another thing we got to take into account, this was a private meeting. Do you really think that when politicians get together, their main focus is to protect other people, protect other countries, or their main focus is let's take care of the United States. Because, for example, I could tell you this, it's not racist to put your country first the same way every country should do it. Is it racist to put your country first? Is it racist to say um, let's put Americans first over other countries? For example, is it racist for the Dominicans to say let's put the Dominican first over the wave of uh, illegal Haitian immigrants because Haiti's in shambles, and they're going over to the Dominican Republic illegally, just the way, the same way that's happening here. Is that bad for the Dominicans to say, let's put Dominicans first? Is it bad for the Mexicans to say, we're going to put Mexicans first over Salvadorians and Hondurans? Is it bad for the Canadians to say, let's put Canadians first? I think if he said that, because we don't know, if he said, the only people that know is the people that were there. If he said that, in my opinion, I don't think he was being racist. I think he was just trying to get a point across 
extremely bluntly the way Donald Trump is. I am not making no excuse for the language. I personally mean, I'm talking about Valentine. I would not have used that language, but I'm not going to impose my views and my way of life on somebody else. And I'm not going to judge somebody else because of the, the way they express themselves. That's between them and God. But well, what I get is that it makes the United States look bad. At the end of the day, the United States president is Donald Trump. He He's representing the country right now. We have a private meeting that was information was not supposed to get out to the public. We have a snitch, Dick Durbin, and he's putting the United States on the world stage. He's putting them negatively because he doesn't like Donald Trump. It's like there's many things that you'd say in, in private, as even as a good person like you, like me, that you don't say it out in public. The way maybe you speak to your wife, you know. There's a lot of things that you say in private that they're not meant to be in public. Everybody says them. Everybody. Nobody's exempt from that. They're just meant to stay private. And I don't think it's fair to the United States in general. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think about that. Again, I don't think it's the end of the deal. A lot of his supporters, his main supporters, don't think it's the end of the deal. At the end of the day, why would I want for the, uh, for the president to fail if I live in the United States? I don't know. For some reason, I get that, like, like kind of that impression that they, 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 they want the president to fail, as if if he fails, we don't fail. Why would you want bad for the president of the United States? At the end of the day, you're not gonna get what you want, because what you want is takes four more years to get. <laughs> but leave your comments down below and let's keep going, guys. Chinese snitch, guys. This week in New York City, they arrested ex-CIA agent by the name, Chinese American, by the name of, what's his name? Let's see if we, if we get this right. Jerry Chung Xing Li. Jerry Chung Xing Li. Ex-CIA agent, and this is why this is important. Mr. Li worked in, the last time he worked in the CIA was 2007. Around the year 2010, the United States had the best Info they have had in years in China. They were able to successfully infiltrate, I don't know if it was some uh, government agencies with uh, spies or, or people that gave them information. Information was coming in good. Around the end of 2010, 2011, information just started to dry up. The United States, um, the United States intelligence community saw that there was a problem. They launched an investigation and one of these persons that got investigated was Mr. Lee. Mr. Lee, by this time, was living in Hong Kong. And in 2012, he decided he was going to move to back to the U.S. He was going to go to, I think it was to Virginia. He stood in two hotels. Him and his family stood in two hotels coming into the U.S. One in Honolulu, Hawaii, and the other one in Fairfax, Virginia. In those two locations, FBI agents were able to... Get into his hotel room. This is like a movie, guys. Get into his hotel room and check that he had two notebooks with him. What did these two notebooks have? These two notebooks had classified information that were not supposed to be uh, in the hands of Mr. Lee. These notebooks have information regarding uh, assets in China, spies. They had information real names and phone numbers of spies in China. They had uh, the uh, information regarding meetings. This was in 2012. The United States FBI or whoever was kept interviewing him and they did him arrest him then and there. Having this information he was not supposed to have in a sense and they don't even know why they did not um, arrest him. Question is that Mr. Lee was able to go back to Hong Kong and when he came in the United States uh, this past week, he was arrested not on the charges of espionage, but on the charges of not of having classified information. So they arrested Mr. Lee. They were what well, the happened. The problem that was happening was that they were killing the assets in China, and the United States didn't know why. So they trying to see if Mr. Lee. Since he had this information and Chinese contacts, 
was responsible for a huge, a huge downfall of information coming out of China. Big, big, big deal, guys. To Ristiando, guys, as you guys know, we here in the show, and when I mean we, I mean just me by myself. This is a one-man operation for now. I we I support new artists. This is a I think she's Spanish speaking. She's a singer. Um, but she's gonna sing in English for you guys. Don't thank me now. Enjoy. <laughs> Why? Where this night? I'll want them to know and to lay them to low and to fly. You know what you where we know you when good know where you fly when you you and you know and you lay. I'll want them to you. I wait out of you. John, and you John. I went on to know and to change and to snow and to glide. I wait on the you, age it all you lay. But no, when I fly, when you flew, age it all you lay. I learned on to you, I love you. Show me more, how to more with a child of more. Guys, enjoy your weekends, guys. Guys, life is short and you do not know when you're going. Guys, remember, I am Valentine. God, family, country, me, Valentine. I'm out.